What's going on guys? This is Richard from Trailline and in today's video we'll be talking about the volatility contraction pattern or the VCP, which is an essential characteristic to all high quality base breakouts. Uh, so here's a little bit about what we'll be covering today. First, what is a VCP? The history, key elements of a VCP. Uh, we'll go through some full examples, the benefits of trading this style of breakout, how to catch a VCP breakout, and finally, managing risk with VCP buys. So diving in, what is a volatility contraction pattern? Essentially, it's a chart consolidation that tightens from left to right within a price base. For instance, here we've got a chart of PLTR, which is tightening from left to right under this prior high and forms a clear pivot right here on the right hand side. And each of these shakeouts are basically getting rid of shorter term holders and basically shares are changing hands from those short term holders to the longer term institutions who are accumulating stock and see a lot of promise in this particular name. So uh, this is a supply and demand characteristic that creates this chart pattern. And as I said, this provides a clear pivot point to manage risk against on strength. And as Minervini likes to say, this is basically the effect, this chart pattern, not the cause. Um, it's really the supply and demand characteristics that creates uh, this dynamic, which can lead to really strong moves in just a matter of a few days and weeks. And before we move on, I did want to define what a pivot point is because I just mentioned that. Um, I've made an entire video about this. So if you're still curious after this explanation, uh, go ahead and check that out after you finish this video. Uh, but basically it's a specific price level where price will make a decision and a large directional move is anticipated and occurs at the very end of a proper basing structure like a VCP. Um, so it's often a prior resistance level, such as a week high, a month high, even a yearly high. And you can use multiple timeframes to find different pivots. And the higher the time frame, the more significant the pivot point. So here we've got a pivot point right at this prior day's high, but also at this weekly high and also the all time high right here if you draw that across. And it's basically the point where demand overwhelms supply. So that's a brief explanation of what a pivot point is. And this is really essential in order to define the proper buy point coming out of a volatility contraction pattern. Uh, so moving on to the history of VCPs, these have kind of been around forever because it's a uh, basically an element of market structure. It's a supply and demand characteristic. Uh, way back when Richard Wyckoff was trading, he called it the spring. Uh, William O'Neill called um, a similar pattern, the cup with handle, which is basically a type of VCP. And of course, Mark Minervini um, really coined the term VCP within his excellent books, which should be linked down below. So here's a chart of a cup and handle. You've got basically a two contraction VCP. This is the pivot point right here. And here's a Wyckoff accumulation graphic where you've got some VCPs right here, as well as at this level through these highs, these are pivot points. So as I mentioned before, VCPs have been around forever because they're an element of market structure caused by supply and demand characteristics. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the key elements of VCPs. Uh, basically, as I mentioned, you wanna see tightening from left to right within the base, and you wanna see multiple contractions, at least two here, um, here's an example with Shopify back in 2017, I believe, where you've got three main contractions and one small one at the very end. And then you have a surge up in price and volume moving on and leading to a really strong uptrend. Um, and you also want to watch for relative strength and accumulation signs before this price base and within the overall pricing structure. So as many pocket pivots as you can see within a base, especially up the right hand side, uh, that's very constructive. Um, and before this space, you definitely want to see a strong uptrend, um, basically indicating that institutions net net are accumulating stock. And this space is just kind of a short term pause within the overall uptrend. Uh, you also want to see volume dry ups and bursts upwards within the base. So on these downtrends within uh, the base, you want to see basically declining volume. And from left to right, you want to see a little bit of a downward trend line in terms of volume until that pivot point where you want to see a surge upwards in volume indicating that institutions are accumulating right at that point. Um, and basically this, this amount of volume cannot be created by just retail traders. This is a sign and hallmark of institutional buying, which should last a few weeks, few months, uh, creating a nice trend that we can ride. And finally, you also want to see a very tight last contraction, um, ideally less than 10% from the prior high to that low of that contraction. And basically this shows that the sellers have really dried up, they've been absorbed, um, and the stock is basically ready to make a large directional move if that demand comes in as shown by the volume. So that's really important. And also the tighter this contraction, the tighter you can manage risk 
if you're using this swing low as your stop loss. So that's some key elements of VCPs. Uh, moving on, I want to talk through a NEO example. And first, I've got a unmarked chart here. So I want you to kind of look at this for yourself and determine where is the volatility contraction pattern. So I'll give you just a second. And while you're doing that, also go ahead and leave a like down below on the video and subscribe if you haven't already to the TraderLine channel uh, for more great videos just like this one. Uh, so now that I've given you guys a few seconds to try to find the VCP for yourself, uh, here is a marked up chart. We've got a strong prior uptrend, a sign of relative strength, great volume on this push upwards. Then we start a price base through this high here, form one contraction, two, and then three. This one is really tight. I think it's about 8% if I remember correctly. And then we see an explosion of volume. Then it pretty much kind of sits here on top of this prior base, forms another kind of volatility contraction pattern with another pivot right here. So you had a quick directional move from this pivot, and then it set up another price base, and this started a really nice uptrend in 2020. And looking at the volume, you see really the textbook uh, dry up on these down days, and then when it starts moving up, you see volume come in, and it gets tighter and tighter as volume really dries up at the end before that pivot point. So this is a really good example. Um, definitely go ahead and study this on your own. Uh, this is in early 2020. I believe this was around the May timeframe when this was formed. So um, definitely one to study here. And I like how it held the 21 EMA as well along the base low. So that is NEO. Moving on, we've got another example from TSM. There's one that Mark Minervini actually traded. Uh, we have the March correction, one contraction, two, three, and then here is the pivot point and you see a nice blast off through the pivot around 57 and a half and a quick directional move getting at a profit right away. And I love how it holds that 10 day simple after the breakout. Uh, that's really a sign of a very powerful um, stock when you see it hold that short term moving average, especially after a burst up on volume. So that is TSM. Uh, next up, we've also got SPT. Uh, this is a more recent one. We've got one contraction, two, and this last one is pretty tight and pretty short. Uh, but we have a nice push up on volume and this started a really nice trend from around 75 all the way up to around 120 or so. And I really like this example because it shows you how the buy point can be below the previous all time high. Uh, but if it's in the upper third of the space, if you kind of split this up into thirds, uh, the probabilities are a little bit higher of it working uh, just because there's less overhead supply. Um, stopping this stock. So this is an example with SPT. And moving on, let's talk about the benefits of trading a volatility contraction pattern. Uh, first of all, as traders, we're trying to leverage both time and money. So you don't want to be kind of wasting time uh, holding a stock through a proper basing structure. Instead, we want to be participating during these strong breakouts and uptrends. And the VCP is a great timing mechanism to get you in right at that proper pivot point. Um, another benefit is you know if you are right or wrong very quickly. Uh, you're right if you have a profit very quickly and starts a nice uptrend, but if it breaks expectations and fails this pivot breakout, as we'll see in just a few slides, uh, that way you know you're wrong and you can exit with a small loss. So to say it again, you're either in profit quickly or out with a small loss and you can move on to the next opportunity. Uh, let's talk about now how to catch a VCP breakout. This is pretty similar to how to catch a, a regular breakout or even a pullback. You want to identify candidates on the weekend and when the market is closed, set alerts at price levels uh, right below that proper pivot point, right below this level. And you want to plan out as much of your trades in advance, including uh, your stop loss, position sizing, all of that. So it's all about execution when the market um, basically opens. And on that breakout, you want to see very large volume, look for above average volume. And that's all about execution as it pushes through that pivot point on high volume. And early on in the day, you can use volume buzz, volume run rate to kind of estimate what that volume is gonna be and whether it will be above the 10 day, uh, 10 week average, 50 day average, whatever moving average on volume you like to use. So that's how to catch a VCP breakout. Uh, now this is very important, how to manage risk with VCP breakouts. Basically, you always wanna set a initial stop loss, basically when the setup has failed. Uh, so here, if you're buying through this pivot, you could set a stop loss uh, basically at the low of this consolidation or even at the low of the day if you really want to keep that uh, risk very tight. Uh, you also want to set alerts right at the pivot point. So if it crosses back under, uh, you're able to watch that stock on your screen. And you always want to, even before you enter uh, the trade and buy shares, uh, know when the setup has failed. So uh, set that stop loss right at that point where the overall setup is invalidated. Uh, then if you do get a profit initially and you make 
a nice gain quickly of five to ten percent even you want to move up stops to break even initially and even as the stock continues to work uh, move them up to protect some profit so if it reverses you're out with a small gain instead of a full stop loss hit so it's very important to set that initial stop loss um, and know when the setup has failed beforehand so if a stock reverses from a vcp like ai did from its ipo base uh, you're protecting your downside and not sitting through a long basing period and a significant drawdown you can just move on to the next potential setup and breakout so here are some key vcp takeaways first of all the vcp is created by supply and demand. It's an effect of accumulation uh, within a base by institutions. Uh, proper VCP should work on schedule, so you either are right right away and are in a quick profit, or it basically reverses and you're basically stopped out for a small loss. Um, and as always, you wanna establish weekly and daily routines to identify and execute potential VCP breakouts. Uh, so that's a quick run through of the volatility contraction pattern. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed and um, basically enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in future videos. Thanks.